Hey hey, it's Tom here and I am going to be showing you how to use one of the best features within Reaper. So it is the actions and you can find the actions up here. You've got your action list which is just question mark. So all you need to do is hit shift and the question mark button. And you have pretty much everything that can be done in Reaper on this list. So even from tiny functions to uh, very very macroscopic ones which do very large things and modifications. The best thing about this is you can chain them into custom actions. So if we look here this is one I have made and if we hit edit you can see I have chained several actions together to create a macro in essence and then I have assigned it to a shortcut. So this one is good it chops it up into 16th note slices and then what it does is it normalizes each slice individually and has a really cool effect on the audio. I also have a shuffler. I've got various different ones where this creates 12 new MIDI items and it basically maps each one across every key. Great for if you're making a sample pack and you have a melody that you want to be available in every key. Um, you've got new track, one key up if you're modulating up or down, uh, change tempo, reshuffle, stuff like that. So I'm going to be showing you how to use the different, the different actions and how to make it as beneficial to you as possible. So the first thing that you really want to do is download some more actions. So Reaper is fairly complete, but without a certain bunch of extensions it's not as powerful so there are extensions they're fairly unofficial that's the SWS and SNM extension pack now then these work fairly close with Reaper without being like designed by Cocos so a lot of people um, throw their own designs in and it is colossal if we just type SWS in here we will see just how many SWS actions there are. So all of these are the various actions that are now added to the Reaper actions list and it is colossal. The functionality has increased a huge amount and it basically means we can search anything. So let's say we want to solo a certain track. Solo and then you have all these different options for soloing. So set solo for track 13, for example. So what you could do if you had a MIDI surface with, um, I don't know, eight buttons across it, you could set each button to solo track one, track two, track three, all the way up to track eight. Now what you could do is you could do mute on the buttons beneath it, and you could basically set them to mute instead and it's really really handy but the thing that makes it absolutely phenomenal is of course the custom actions okay so what we're going to do is we are going to use a custom action that we have created so let's create a custom action and test it out what I want to do with this is I want to duplicate it and paste it here so we could do copy and paste. However, every time we do that, I want it to prompt me to set a new tempo and also pitch it up. So this is really handy if you're making a sample pack. You can pitch up the items in different tempos, you can map it across different keys, whatever. This will just allow us to make a whole bunch of samples and somewhat automate the process of creating a sample pack where you only need to listen to each individual item back and pick the ones you like. So what we're going to do, question mark again, for the actions, we're going to do custom actions new. Let's name this to a really good name. So sample pack creation. And let's say duplicate with new tempo one semitone up something like that it's really good to have it as descriptive as possible because 
that way that way if you're using it or if you do indeed share it onto other people then you know it's obvious it's searchable if someone's looking for a duplicate they'll find this if they're looking for something with new tempo um we could even change it so it's one semitone up and then that just makes it as clear as possible and you also have your own tag there so you can have everything listed under sample pack creation or creative effects or however you want to do it so it's really worth paying attention to your titles I don't actually have that many custom ones and the ones I use I need enough that I know the names of them but if you decide to get into making plenty of custom actions tag them right so what do we need for this so if you remember we are copying the item pasting it at the end so duplicating it but when we paste it it prompts us for a new tempo and it pitches it up so the very first thing we need to do is copy the item so we just search in the bar copy item and it should be under edit yes it is here so just like you would under the edit prompt edit copy so all we need to do is drag this over now then if we were to just paste it it will paste wherever the cursor is and if we've just clicked on the item the cursor is likely to be somewhere in the middle of the item which just means we're pasting it and it's overlapping and then we have to manually fix it all so what we want to do is set the cursor to the very end of the item so when it pastes it pastes seamlessly at the end and transitions across so what we need to look for is something like move cursor and let's say end item and we should be able to find item navigation move cursor to end of items perfect so this is why tagging is really really important because you should just be able to think and then type what you want to do and if it's well tagged it will be able to just come up so there we go all of a sudden we've got it copied we've moved the cursor to the end we can paste so let's do that for now um, item paste there should be one item paste items or tracks that one will do now then, before we paste, what we want to do is actually set a new tempo. And this saves jumping back with the cursor set a new tempo, jumping forwards. What I'm going to do is set new tempo. Um, we'll do new tempo, end item. New tempo, ah, that's why I spelt new wrong. New tempo, end item. And it actually has one of my custom ones, which we will look at in a second. Let me just order it. So let's just hit OK for now. Let's find new tempo at end of item. Uh, new tempo at end of item. So this is just a little tiny custom action. Move cursor to end of items and insert tempo time signature change marker at edit cursor. OK, so that's fine. So we can now look at... Where's our new one? Sample pack creation. Edit. So now we know this actually just moves cursor anyway. And then it creates new tempo. So we've realized that this is redundant, so we can just remove the action. So we've pasted the item. And now all we need to do is pitch it up one semitone. So um, pitch item, spell it right, item semitone. Pitch item down one semitone or pitch item up one semitone. And there we have it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second one with semitone down. And it will be a very close keyboard shortcut. Before we finalize this, I'm going to highlight the consolidate undo points. If this is left off and you hit the shortcut and this action happens... Then when you hit undo, it'll undo to that, then that, then that, and then that. So you have to hit undo four times to get back. If we consolidate, this all counts as one undo point. So when we hit undo, it doesn't cycle through each one of these. It just undoes the whole custom action instead of the individual actions contained within. So I always have consolidate undo points on. If it's one I use a lot, I'll show an actions menu. 
but if it's one I don't use a lot, I'll leave it open. So for the big actions, I'll show it in the actions menu, but for little ones like this, especially if the keyboard is signed, we don't need to. So hit OK. Let's add a keyboard shortcut. So let's do Control Shift and let's see if square bracket works. Brilliant. So that's gone in. Does it work? It doesn't clash with anything. Now what we're going to do, we're going to copy and we're going to, oh, we're going to edit this, change it from semitone up to semitone down. Okay. And we're going to add the other square bracket. So both square brackets will go either up or down. So let's close. Let's delete that. Now then let's try this keyboard. So let's do up. Select tempo, 135. We'll keep it the same. And it's pitched up. Select up again, 135. And it keeps pitching up. Now let's try pitching down the other keyboard shortcut. Okay, so we've found a little bug in the custom action. It's because we have forgotten to edit this last one. So let's remove and pitch item down. Pitch item down one semitone. Okay, close. Now what should happen if we do that? It will reduce to five, four. You can very conveniently see the pitches up here. So let's give this a little listen. So you can hear the drums incrementally increasing. Let's try it with a different sound. Let's just do, um, I wonder what we can look at. I bet there's a good bass sound. One shots. Let's just do that. So, Let's try this. So this is really handy. What we could do is if you had your number keys, you could assign each number to how many semitones it pitches up. So you could essentially copy it and instead of tempo coming up maybe we just want semitones and if let's say we hit seven it would pitch up sev seven semitones and you could just create a melody just by hitting the keys obviously it's maybe not as good as the inline midi editor but for some workflows that might be more suited especially if you're dealing with everything on the same note length or maybe you're pitching drums and don't mind things being semitones in the wrong keys. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have learned some Reaper custom actions. If you've gotten this far, I really appreciate it, and I would love for you to like the video, subscribe, and please comment. If you have any custom actions yourself or any questions, please, please let me know, and I will be more than glad to help. Thank you very much.